Welcome to video five in our Perfect Unity teaching series. Just a reminder, watch these in order, okay? Well, we've covered the basics, we've covered uh, apostles and prophets, and now we're looking at the calling of evangelists in the fivefold gifting. If you're not an evangelist, you're gonna like this next two lines here. Surely at some point in your life as a Christian, you've been made to feel inadequate or even like a lesser Christian because you aren't successful enough in leading people to Jesus. Well, don't worry, it's a gifting that you may not have, a calling that you may not have, but let us remember that God does grant to all of us in season each gift is needed. So while your base, core, default calling may not be as an evangelist, you as a follower of Jesus should still be ready and able to share your faith and to do so regularly. Well, evangelist means one who sends or one who brings good news. Evangelists love spending time with unsafe people. They know the word and have a gift for making it relevant to the world. In the Bible, one of the best examples we have there is Philip in Acts 8, which you can check out. They enjoy discussing their point of view. They like to debate. They like to draw others into discussion. In the secular world, these are often salespeople, politicians, um, but with Jesus as their product rather than vacuum cleaners. The big question that evangelists are always asking is, are new people joining the family of God? So back for a moment to our wagon train illustration. If the apostle is pointing the way over the next hill and sharing about the vision to come and the destination and the prophet is constantly checking the map and aware of the weather and road conditions and concerned with hearing God and taking each right step, then the evangelist is the one that rallied everyone to come along in the first place. And at every town you pass as a wagon train here goes around and recruits people to join the train. They're passionate about the destination and they want everyone to know about this great thing and they're inviting everyone in constantly. Well, let's talk for a moment about immature evangelists, those who are called to this but haven't developed maturity in their gifting. They generally make two big mistakes. One is they can present a gospel that is watered down. They're so very concerned, rightly, with people accepting Jesus that they just kind of sell him rather than presenting the good news of Jesus. And in doing so, they can really devalue discipleship and what it really means to follow Jesus. In secular terms, this is the used car salesman who will say anything to sell the car while leaving out some pretty important information you may be needed to make an informed decision. And number two, they can too quickly and too harshly move on from relationships once people accept Christ. Like a salesman, greeting you, listening to your needs, showing you the right car, uh, walking you around it, listening to all your stories about your life and the kind of car you need, and showing you great care and concern, and listening to what you can afford and trying to make the payments work for you. And then when you say, I'll take it, Right? They go, okay, great. Here's my finance director. They're going to help you. Goodbye. And you never hear from them again. Right? They won't answer your calls once you bought the car. Well, that's jarring and it deflates and it devalues the relationship. So what do evangelists need from you? What do they need from their church? Well, first they need connections. They need you to include them in your life together with unsaved people. Not as closers that you bring in to just share the gospel but to genuinely invite into your life together with your friends, to become friends with your friends, to have access to exercise and live out this calling to evangelize. They also need help to disciple, that is to teach love and care for all the people they're bringing in. Now listen here, here's a huge key too. Evangelists love bringing people to their church to experience this life that they're sharing. But nothing's more tragic than seeing that happen and having that non-believer visit and then have a terrible experience where no one loves or embraces them. So they also need us to live out and love and accept the people they're bringing. Well, evangelists are crucial to the vision of the church because their concern is our main concern. It's people coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus. It's making disciples. It's the Great Commission. Some people have a special calling for this, but we all need to be equipped and ready to do the work of evangelism. <clears throat> well, that's session five. Go ahead and move on now to video six where we talk about pastors.